Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalren, and in today's video we'll be talking about a massive boost that Blizzard implemented for character experience gain. We'll also be talking about what are some of the best leveling strategies and tips available for patch 8.3. You might as well take advantage of this massive EXP boost and this video won't really go over any new strategies but rather all the ones that we have available kind of collected and combined in a single video. So hopefully you guys enjoy this. Blizzard implemented a 100% extra experience buff for all characters until April the 20th. So for the next month, leveling characters should be far easier. Which is perfect because majority of us are stuck within our homes waiting out for the world events to be over. So hopefully you guys will use this video to maximize your uptime when it comes to leveling alts. Whether there are some classes you've always wanted to play or maybe certain specs you wanted to test out collecting heritage armor, or simply preparing for Shadowlands. First, when you start on your leveling journey in patch 8.3, you want to prepare. So at the beginning of the video, we'll be talking a lot about preparation. All the different items you might want to consider bringing for your character, depending how hardcore and heavy you want to go into this leveling experience grind. Let's first start off with some add-ons that you can install before you begin your journey on your character. The two add-ons I recommend are going to be Azeroth Autopilot. What this add-on does is it helps automate a lot of these regular parts of the downtime that you have with questing. It will automatically pick up quests from an NPC and automatically turn them in. You can even set it so you can automatically pick a quest reward based on highest item level. It can also auto repair your gear and sell all your junk every time you are a vendor and it gives you a general path to follow and in expansions of Legion and Battle for Azeroth, it will adjust based on which zone you're in and which quest you choose from, but this is probably the fastest add-on to level with as it automates majority of the downtime. If you're someone who's a veteran of World of Warcraft, you've played the game multiple times and have done majority of this quest, this is the best add-on to help maximize the uptime you have from going from quest to quest. However, if you're someone who is fairly new at the game and you're trying to take advantage of this brand new buff, I would advise against this add-on. If you are new, play the game at your own pace, read the questions if you want to, and pick the gear that you want from the vendors. Play the game however you like, but if you want to skip all the boring stuff, then I would definitely use this add-on. Another add-on that is recommended by a lot of people is Handy Notes. Handy Notes becomes even more handy in expansions of Warlords of Janor, Legion, and Battle for Azeroth. Throughout the game, you'll have rares to fight and chests to loot with a different variety of goodies, especially in WAD, Legion, and BFA. So hand and notes can help you out by giving you some ideas of if there's a rare mob nearby that you might want to slay for extra bonus XP, or in the later expansions, you might even be able to get quite a bit of experience just from rare hunting and treasure hunting, which can be quite a lot of fun. If you're someone who wants to cut down on different ways to gain XP and cut down on the time you're spending out in the world, get into max level, you will definitely want to use handy notes for the last few expansions or few levels. Next, let's talk about consumables. Some of the stuff that you might be able to buy from the auction house or might be able to buy on your alts. In consumables, we'll mostly be talking about if you're trying to level another alt, that means you already have a main, most likely at 120, and should have access to majority of these items. The first item on the consumables list is Draught of Ten Lands, which can be gotten from the Warfront vendor. It's a consumable for an hour for extra experience gain and extra stats. Perfect for any characters that are just trying to get through the experience. The next item I would get is one insightful rubelite. It is a gem that goes in a gem slot for a piece of gear that increases your leveling by 5 extra percent. I would hold on to this item on your character until you get yourself a decent ring or maybe a decent item with a socket. And once you do, you basically want to equip the item and hold on to it for as long as possible. I would use this on a minor item like a bracer or a ring, a piece of gear that isn't super necessary in leveling for stats. The faster you get a piece of gear with a socket and can slot in the insightful rubelite, the better. Another item that's really useful is Goblin Glider Kit should stock up on a bunch of those from the auction house, as many as possible. Because if you ever have any area with high enough elevation, you can use the Goblin Glider Kit to really cover a lot of ground. To increase our movement speed out in the world to get from quest to quest, we will also be using Light Step Hoof Plates for our mount equipment for that character. At max level, you may want to swap it out to someone else. But the 20% extra movement speed, especially in the early levels, is definitely going to help you get from place to place. 
The next thing you want to do is pick a spec. By now you probably have decided which race and which class you want to play. And now you want to figure out which spec should you be playing for questing. Now, in my personal opinion, you should play whatever you like. If you're gonna take this game slow and steady and really explore different specs and different playstyles, you should play whatever you like. There are optimal specs and we'll talk about them in a second, but if you are exploring a specific spec or playstyle, if you really want to learn how to play that spec, you should start with that spec immediately. You learn the pacing for the spec, the rotation, and you get different abilities that make up the spec slowly, but you'll be able to adjust to them and apply them to your key binds easily. However, if experience gain is your priority, no matter how you do it, then here are some of the more efficient options. If you have a class that has a tank or a healer specialization, you should queue dungeons as that tank or healer specialization as much as possible. Most of the tanks, especially at lower level, are all viable. None of them are so bad to the point where you wouldn't want to have that class or spec tanking in normal dungeons. So take advantage of the fact that you have a tanking or healing spec. Especially useful for anybody who wants to tank or heal on that class in the future. As dungeons is probably the best testing ground for you to play around with your abilities and find out how to heal or how to hold aggro as a certain tank. However, if you want that one spec that's really good, at leveling in the world going from place to place quest to quest this is the list i compiled together of all the specs a bunch of guides and websites will recommend now everybody has slightly different information but these are the specs that just about everybody agrees with majority of the specs are really good at aoe damage or in the case of shadow priest the only viable dps choice some classes are even recommended to level as tanks because those tank specs are one highly durable and second do a lot of aoe damage so you're able to pull a bunch of mobs together and destroy them over time but even if you wanted to play let's say elemental shaman over enhancement it's not like your level and experience would be that much slower so play any spec you like but if you just want a direct spec that is recommended by a bunch this is the list we have here now that you have your character selected and you're ready to venture out in the world the next thing you need to do is figure out your heirloom situation not only should you equip your character with as many heirlooms as possible but you can take it a step further and even enchant them for this we'll be using a google doc that has a bunch of viable enchants and alternatives available for every spec in the game if your character is enchanted you actually do just a hair more damage and can make your playstyle feel a little bit smoother for example as an armors warrior with base gear you have very slower swing rate so your character is generating far less rage and is able to put out far less abilities However, with a couple enchants for haste gear, and now your warrior is swinging far faster, creating a way faster playstyle, and all these enchants scale super well on low level characters. Another set of enchants that's insanely good on low level characters are the ones that proc damage. Those enchants that proc damage can be found on necklaces and weapons, and they'll do quite a bit. They won't be your top DPS slot or anything, but they'll definitely proc a little bit extra damage to the point where you can almost, if not all the time, one-shot mobs as you're questing on your tune. So I'll have a list down in the description below for this spreadsheet if you want to use it. And it has even alternatives for other enchants you want to run. Some of these enchants are going to be expensive depending on your auction house, but you gotta figure out exactly what kind of ease of play do you want for your character. You want a bunch of random elemental procs firing away from your character just obliterating targets in front of you or do you want to go for a cheap alternative that increases the value of certain stats there's a lot of viability for how you want to build your character and i feel like engaging with this part of the content can be quite fun in a way sometimes expensive but still quite cool to craft your character even further definitely worth checking out Next, which zones do you start with? It's very important in World of Warcraft that you choose the right zones to start questing in. And some of the easiest choices that a lot of people will have are for Alliance, for example, to start in something like Westfall or Lakhmadan, or finish both of the zones before you explore further. The reason is a lot of the zones that we have right now in World of Warcraft now scale with the character. So in the past, you would level in Westfall from level 10 to maybe level 15 and then you would go to lakeshire but with the way that the game functions now westfall will continue to scale mobs and experience and quests to your character's level 
That means if you are at level 20, 30, and even 40, you can continue to still level in Westfall. We could also take advantage of the fact that these zones were intended for level 10 players, and majority of level 10 players don't even have a mount. You don't get one till level 20. So Blizzard designed the quest to be kind of close together, and quest objectives to not be too far apart from the people you gotta turn the quest into. So with a mount, whether you have an heirloom mount or a level 20 mount with a level 20 allied race, you're able to get from quest objective to quest objective far easier. So the travel time is very short, all the places are nearby, it creates a very linear questing experience where you don't have to go across half the map just to complete a quest. And because the whole zone scales with you, it's a lot faster for you to level up that way. So as I said earlier, as an alliance character, you'll want to start with Westfall or Lakhmadan because they are some of the earlier zones you get to and try to exhaust them of as many quests as possible. If you're a horde player, the two zones I recommend starting with are going to be Ajara, which is a fairly linear zone, even though it looks big, and Silver Pine Forest. If you're a Horde player and let's say you finish Silver Pine Forest, you could actually go back and do Ajara as well. You'll get a lot more value out of the XP for a very linear questing experience that's very convenient. From there on, your character will have to make a couple choices of which zones to level in. When you get to level 60, you'll have to choose between BC zones and Wrath of Lich King zones. At a later time, you'll have to choose between Cataclysm zones and Mr. Pandaria. For both of those zones, it doesn't really matter which one you run, they don't really have one that's essentially better than the other. So pick your favorite, pick the one that you remember the most, or pick the one you've never played before and always wanted to explore. From there on you have Warlords of Genora that you have to slug through, majority of people don't really like WAD leveling too much, most people would choose to actually kill rares and collect treasures, which is why I recommended an add-on of handy notes from earlier. Then into Legion, which was one of the better questing experiences, and then Battle for Azeroth, which is probably the most straightforward experience you can have. Now let's talk about different strategies that there are for leveling. The first strategy would be to play a tank or a healer and just spam dungeons. Especially useful if you have a bunch of friends that are also leveling and they play DPS. Trust me, they'll be very excited for you to be a tank or a healer because that means they get instant cues into these dungeons. And when all of you know how dungeons work, you have gear, you are coordinating your attacks on different mobs and bosses, then you can have a painless experience. Plus, questing and dungeons has always been more fun with friends, all the different gear everybody gets and competing with each other on damage. Hopefully as you do dungeon queue spamming, the game gives you a variety of different dungeons. Before the system without any experience boost, there's a good chance you would queue into the same dungeon over and over and over and get levels very slowly. But hopefully with this boost, you should see a variety of different dungeons that always scale to your level and try to give you something new, like different mechanics and different environments. I always find myself kind of being worn out after doing too many of these dungeon queue spams, so for anybody who does this, unless you're just trying to grind this out in a single day, feel free to take breaks. This is probably the most efficient and the fastest thing that you can do at lower levels in order to gain experience very rapidly, but take breaks from time to time because otherwise you'll just wear yourself out. If you do want to quest as a DPS, then what you should do is try to quest as much as possible out in the world while queued for a dungeon. As a DPS, you won't get instant queues, but if you choose to play as a DPS, that means you should also be out in the world questing and killing mobs and collecting experience in every way you can. Because as a DPS, you get a different environment, sometimes you are in a dungeon and slaying bosses, and other times you're out in the world just completing plentiful quests, then it gives you a little bit extra of the change of pace, change of environment, and I would say for marathons, if you're trying to just level ASAP all night long, doing it as a DPS and questing while queuing in dungeons has proven to me the easiest way possible. If you're out in the world, you could turn on war mode if you're feeling spicy. It does give you a little bit extra experience, and as long as you stick to the zones next to your capital cities, for the most part you shouldn't find enemies of the opposing faction. But if you're someone who likes the idea of world PvP and likes being able to gank players or maybe even have an opportunity to get ganked yourself and you like that type of environment, then war mode is definitely worth. Or if you're simply trying to gain a little bit extra experience, 10% or 25 for alliance, either way it works, try to stick in the safe zones.
If for any reason you're logging out off of World of Warcraft, try to log in in and in. This way your character will collect rested experience, which means you don't have to play this character 24-7. If you play this character for an hour or two, log out for the night and come back in, as long as you log out at an in, the character will have extra bonus rested experience. That means you're able to catch up to your progress very quickly and very rapidly, whether you prefer doing dungeons or straight up world questing. Another piece of content you can take advantage of is Party Sync. Party Sync was added fairly recently to World of Warcraft, but in a sense it allows you to level with your friends however many you want to and sync your levels and progression together. For example, if I have let's say a Warlock that's level 110 and I'm trying to get him up to level 120, but I have a friend at a level 40, we can actually sync our characters and in a way I squish my character down to the level of my friend. That means we are now able to do dungeons and quests together. With party sync, it also syncs up to the lowest common denominator, whoever has the lowest level, it syncs down to their quest progression. That means if there's certain quests that they haven't done but you have, now is the opportunity for you to do those quests all over again. This can be used to do dungeons together, no matter what level you are. Your character will be squished to, you know, have a limited amount of abilities and you will do slightly less damage and certain talents will be accessible to you if you do this, but still you're able to progress your character, mine from 110 to 120, while my friend is the one from 44 to 45, all at the same time. This can be used for dungeons, battlegrounds, and even questing out in the world. So you can level characters of different levels while also hanging out with your friends. That's about all the tips that I have for you guys when it comes to leveling in patch 8.3. Take advantage of the 6p boost for all your alts needs and have fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see all of you guys in another one.